Joe Basso with Music Radar, and I've been giving some bass lessons to uh, this guy here, Billy Sheehan. And they they seem to be paying off. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that sounded pretty good before. Uh, right. So we're here with Billy at the EBS booth, and Billy, you have your own little pedal you've been yeah. working on. It's uh, it's this guy down here. We'll take a good shot of it later. But uh, well, there it is, right there. That's an even better shot. Uh, for years, I've uh, always had kind of a double signal. Actually, in some cases, triple. Right. Two outputs from the bass, one of the outputs split between clean and distortion also. and So um, it was a great way to be able to get real bass tones right, right. that you need to function in a band, but still be able to get a thing on top of it to give you that extra schmutz, that extra, I'm not, I'm not sure what that actually means, yeah, but yeah. that extra thing. And so um, uh, for years, I tried to uh, uh, get a kind of a, a, a version of my Pierce preamp, right. which was made back in Buffalo. Uh, I think I got it in 19. I remember I had it in the rack when I was on tour with Van Halen okay. in 1980. Wow. Opening for Van Halen in 1980. Uh, and uh, so it's been around a long time. And I still got that one. That's the one I mainly use. OK. But I'm worried about it because it's the only one. And it's failed a couple of times. I've had, it, had to get it repaired. Now, you've so, been working on this one for a while. Yeah, so a little over two years. OK. So we basically uh, did in a pedal an approximation of what that Pierce does on okay. its own. It's basically, it's like two channels of a console. One channel does one thing, one, the other channel does another, and they sum and combine later on. So that's kind of what we did here. Because you were telling me that sometimes when you get distortion, the bass goes away. Exactly. Yeah. That's the, uh, I mean, uh, it's most evident uh, in, a, in a Dance to the Music by Sly and the Family Stone. Okay, yeah. When suddenly uh, uh, Larry Graham kicks his distortion puddle and you hear <laughs> You don't hear much low end because there's right. distortion on there. Now that's just kind of a anecdotal uh, example of that. But in fact, any bass player knows. Basically, you need a big, fat, perfectly formed sine wave to get a lot of low end. Right, right. When you start uh, mushing it up with clipping, it's no longer a big, fat sine wave, and you don't get that depth of low end that you get from, uh, like, a, when you hear a car stereo way off in the distance with that subwoofer, yeah, yeah. it's a sine wave traveling through space and time. So what did you do with EBS now to circumvent that? Well, we kept one channel. We split the signal into two complete separate paths. One channel is clean and one channel has distortion on okay. it. Now, the good thing about it is uh, you can affect both of those independently with a little loop. You plug a tip ring sleeve quarter inch jack and you got the send and return. So on the clean, you can put compression, EQ, whatever else you want. On the distortion, you can put the EQ or uh, whatever, a chorus or whatever else you want on it. So it gives you these two separate signal paths that combine later on. And that uh, prevents you from losing the deep low end uh, and again, it approximates what the Pierce does. It does exactly, but it's it's close enough that it's that I love it, and it's uh, uh, supreme, supremely useful for a lot of bass players that are going for that. Because they sometimes they'll hear what I do, and I'll get all kinds of emails for months. Like, how do you? I'm doing it, but my band hates me because they can't earn a low end. I go, well, you gotta, you know, here's what you do. And, and how do you do that? Can we hear some of this? Yeah. Well, basically. Uh, I hear some low end in there too, but if I take the clean signal off. That's what you get when you distort bass. Pretty useless. I mean, you can maybe do a solo. Well, no I, I, can do, I can do that. I'm sure you can. But there's no low end. You need to power the drum. So you bring that clean channel back in. You still get the, all that. You get with the distortion, but you, now you have the low end. That's bass. Yeah. Yes. So that's really important. So I, I always got in trouble for ruining bass players because they'd start, start using a distortion sound, but they lose their low end, and I try to tell them all the time. Now this bass does a thing on that too. I've got a separate output for low end completely. Right, right. But that's a different story. This is, this is designed for anyone with any bass, and I think guitar players are gonna like it a lot too because you get a totally a, a clean guitar tone mixed in with however much distortion you want. And uh, I know a couple guitar players I know that are pretty famous that have been doing that lately. I was gonna say, guitar players can use it too? <laughs> guitar players can use it too. Will, okay. it, will it Corey Apple? It will Corey Apple. So. <laughs> Honeymooners. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> cool. So that's the idea. And to put it in a pedal, uh, there's a lot of companies that make pedals, but I've used some of the EBS stuff for years. Uh, their octave pedal is, I think, the best octave pedal around. I mean, I, I don't play five or six string bass, but with that octave thingy, I don't need to, you know, it saves a, 
it saves money on strings. I can just play that little B note here, and it's the B note. It's really solid and together, it tracks perfectly. So I knew of them from that and, and several other the pedals. Their little uh, preamp they do the micro bass is a great little uh, uh, add-on for anything if you need uh, a, a great fixer for any problem you might have. So we talked a little bit about doing the uh, the pedal starting, like I said, a little over two years ago. And uh, I think it shipped here yesterday, okay. the yeah. first bunch. I had the first prototype, which was cool. We fine-tuned it, did a second prototype. A few more suggestions, did a third, and then there was a couple more tweaks, and here we have it. And uh, is it good for spear fishing? Uh, no, but if you threw it hard <laughs> enough, when the fish surfaced at the water and clonked them right on the head, you'll probably, but then you gotta go in and get them, so that's a big pain in the ass. Okay, well thank you very much. My pleasure, You've my pleasure. have been here with Billy Sheehan at the EBS booth, and it's the Billy Sheehan Signature Drive right. Metal. <laughs> and uh, why don't you take us out with something? <laughs>